Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called, What God Wants to Teach Us. So whatever God's trying to teach me, I want to try to teach others. So this is what God's teaching me, I'm going to try to teach it to you. God wants us to understand that he can give us a 100% righteous, sinless position with him. Not because of my 100% righteous, sinless position, but because of Jesus' 100% sinless position that he puts me into. Like when God sees me, he sees me as righteous or sinless as Jesus is. I give my sins to Jesus, he gives me his righteousness. It's the only way it works with a holy God. Nobody's going to approach a holy God with their good works saying, am I good enough yet? God will always say no. But if you believe in Jesus to make you good enough, then you'll be 100% good. You can call yourself sinless. God wants to take all my sins away, not just some of them. It's not the cross plus my works or something. It's just the cross. But there is a part in obeying God after we're made 100% sinless or righteous. It's like we can try to earn these suffering love for Jesus rewards or something. The more we obey Jesus, let Jesus live through us, the more rewards we get in heaven, especially if we're persecuted for it or suffer doing it. Suffering love gets the greatest rewards in heaven. And there's suffering love for Jesus rewards. So it's like I get this vision sometimes of me in my mansion in heaven. I'm sitting on a throne or something. I'm like a bride or something. And Jesus is going into my reward room in my mansion, and he's pulling out these gifts, like a big pile of Christmas gifts or something. And he's coming over, and he's going to hand them to me and give them to me or something. Sort of like my rewards in heaven or something. Sort of like a husband giving his wife gifts or something at Christmas time. So in the vision, Jesus is handing me a gift on this little throne or something. And I'm looking at Jesus and I'm saying, oh, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve all these gifts. Why are you giving them to me? And Jesus looks at me and he says something like, uh, well, you're as righteous as me, Rod. And because you chose with your free will choice to act loving towards me on the earth and obey me, I want to give you this reward. It's like he, he's so happy about people choosing to love him on earth and let him live through their bodies to do good works on the earth or something. That reveals our love for him. So the gift that he's trying to give me, my suffering love for Jesus' reward or something, he delights in. He wants to celebrate it. Rod believed in me on earth. He tried to let me do good loving things out through him. I want to celebrate Rod's love for me on earth by giving him rewards in heaven for it or something like that. So it's like we just have to receive them or something and believe that through our faith or something, we earn these gifts. Yes, Jesus, go do something loving through me. It's like sometimes when I'm doing a good work, or letting Jesus do a good work through me, because I can't do any good works by myself. Like Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing successfully. But if I let Jesus do something loving through me for God or for other people here on earth, then these rewards start getting manufactured for me, type thing. It's like uh, I'm trying to do some loving obedience to Jesus, and it's like a reward is being prepared or created, like a gift being wrapped or something that I can enjoy later in heaven. Like Jesus saying, uh, when they persecute you, when you're trying to do a loving act for Jesus on the earth, rejoice and be glad, greater are your rewards in heaven. So oh, you can have this vision of being in a mansion in heaven, great rewards in heaven, your own personal Jesus in your mansion forever. <laughs>
Just like we got Jesus living in us here on earth, we could have Jesus living in us in heaven in our mansion. Like it says, Jesus is, Jesus said, I'm always with you. He'll be in my mansion in heaven. He's with me right here now on earth, too. That's what we have to believe. He makes us 100% righteous, sinless in God's eyes. He wants to dwell in us and live through us. And if we if we'll obey him to do loving things, we'll get greatly rewarded for it. That's how we have to feel. Not like I'm not worthy, Jesus doesn't love me, or whatever. Whatever Satan's trying to tell us the lie or something. God can't be good if you're suffering. God can't be good in an evil world. Yes, he can, Satan. He was good in Joseph's day in suffering, or Daniel's day in slavery, or Noah's day watching him drown. He's good today, too. he will be good in the tribulation, too. When you're listening to God talk to you or whatever, he tells you how great he is. Then you can worship him. You can ask him questions. How much do you love me, God? Well, I sent my son for you. How much do you love me, Jesus? Well, I suffered and died on the cross to make you righteous, Ron. A righteous rod through Christ's righteousness. And then we can decide whether we want to let him love God and love others out through us. I can't do it, but Jesus could do it through me. Jesus said, without me, you're not going to do anything successful. But with me, you can do all things. Like Paul said, uh, I can do everything I need to do for God with Jesus doing it through me. It's like Paul says, it's no longer I that's writing these letters in prison. It's Jesus living through me doing it. Paul could be very joyful in a rat infested prison writing letters to the church because that's what Jesus wanted him to do. And it, was good. it worked out for Paul's good. It worked out for the church's good. Paul going into a rat infested prison for a couple of years with Jesus with him. So I could be in a difficult situation myself, back pain, uh, an evil world around me. But Jesus is with me. I'm happy. It's like a motto I have, something like, uh, I got to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, and help me not to be bothered by it. A joy that comes from being close to God, not from owning all the things in the world and experiencing all the selfish pleasures of the world, like a rich man going to hell or something. Jesus needs to be our treasure, and that can satisfy us when we're in him. Perfect peace, fullness of joy, perfect righteousness, no guilt, no fear, no depression. Love, joy, peace, and righteousness in the kingdom of God. The fruit of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And we shouldn't be afraid. We should believe that our bodyguards are with us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and angels. Who's going to come against me <laughs> and when? I always win with Jesus. Jesus controls it all. I don't care. I don't think there's a pre-trib rapture. I think that uh, we go through the tribulation, but we go through it with the power of God. Jesus controls the tribulation. What's there to fear? It's when people are trusting in themselves that they fear. It's when you're trusting in God, you don't have to fear. Nothing possible for Jesus to do. More powerful than Batman. Just finished watching that Joker movie. So that's what it seems like the world's going to turn into. So like a bunch of satanic jokers or something. The way the Joker operated was the way that Satan wants everybody to operate. Especially the young people today. Anyways, uh, but we got a power greater than Batman living in us. Jesus just has to speak a word and Satan disappears. <laughs> he controls it all. I'm in a spiritual war, but you always win it with Jesus. It's like we can go through suffering in this life at the hands of evil people, sort of like Joseph or whatever. Joseph's brothers acted like satanic jokers or whatever. <laughs> they tried to throw him into a pit to kill him because they were jealous or something. Then they sold him into slavery. Then his slave master's wife falsely accused him of rape and he went into prison. That can be our experience in this life. Evil people persecuting us. But God had a good plan in it. God's got a good plan for us in a wicked land. It's like Joseph could say, God has made me to forget about all my sufferings of my past. Prison, slavery, brothers hating them. And that 
They meant it as evil, but God meant it for good. Even the Job experience, that was something good was God was trying to do with Job. He learned more about God through going through suffering than he ever learned about God without suffering. And that can be good for us too. It's like some of the prophets say that uh, God's trying to put us through hell now so we can handle hell later. <laughs> like a tribulation training school for the bride or something now. I, I know it's, uh, it hasn't been easy for me, especially when you want to try to teach truth. Satan tries to stop you. But you can win with Jesus. Oh, you can always win with Jesus, and Jesus is always with you. <laughs> so it's not once saved, always saved. You can be 100% righteous and sinless one minute by faith. Satan could work on you and get you to sin and destroy your faith or whatever, like a King Saul experience. So you got to want to get saved and stay saved. By faith, not works. And God doesn't force us to have faith. We could choose like King Saul to get rid of the faith with Satan. So we got to get faith and keep the faith, like Paul talked about. There's going to be a great apostasy coming too. All of these Christians that didn't really know God very well when the economic collapse or World War III started up, they just say, well, where's God now or something with Satan? And whatever faith they had, Satan steals. It's like the parable of the sower. They once had faith, trouble came along, and they uh, their faith evaporated when the trouble hit. So there's going to be lots of apostasy of the false church or whatever, or the demon control church or something today. But there'll be a few remnant or something trying to obey God in the midst of this sort of like Noah experience judgment on the wicked. You can be like a happy Noah today, knowing truth yourself, trying to obey God and teach truth to others, even if they don't want to believe in it. You still get rewarded for preaching repentance to them or judgment to them or something. Jesus talks about the end times being like a satanic joker world. Everybody's so wicked. It's sort of like um, the lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. And God haters, Christian haters or something. Haters of anything good. And that's because they've been so wicked. God's going to like let the demons loose on them or something. Like Nazi Germany or something. That's where we're headed. Like a satanic world empire. The good news is, like, Daniel in a wicked Babylon, God can take good care of you in it and bring good things out of it for you. Joseph was in a wicked Egypt slavery, but he could handle it with God's help too. Noah could handle God's judgment on the wicked around him. Because God was miraculously helping Noah or Daniel or Joseph or something through their troubles here on earth and bringing good out of them. Or them, even the Job satanic attack on him or something. God could work it out for his good. So it's not supposed to be a suffering free life, it's supposed to be a difficult life. Like Jesus said, only a few enter the kingdom of heaven or enter into eternal life or something. The rest go to hell. It's like about ten percent are like the remnant going to heaven, about ninety percent are like the wicked going to hell. But that's the way it has to be. Jesus said, a few enter eternal life. Most go down the broad road of destruction into hell. I'm not expecting a great revival of real remnant Christians. I'm expecting a few remnant Christians to be operating in the power of God, maybe getting a few people saved and doing church like the book of Acts. No great revival for making America great again or something. So God's got to get us ready for this judgment coming. And maybe when the judgment hits, a few people will want to get serious about obeying God, and you'll see who they are. They'll be like a lighthouse in a dark world or something. A few Jesuses walking around the satanic jokers or something. And we, we shouldn't fear any of this, because if Jesus is with us, we always win. It's like you got the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the angels going with you all the time, and they just got demons scurrying around or something, trying to control the satanic jokers around you. Like Jesus said to me, something like, uh, you're safe with me, Rod. <laughs> Jesus is like a strong tower of safety or something. Jesus controls it all. He just speaks the word, they all disappear. The whole world could be coming against you, all the enemies. But they can't touch you unless Jesus allows them to. 
Jesus can feed me in the desert for 40 years if he needs to. He can keep me safe in a fiery furnace. That's not too difficult for him to do. And he loves me so much, he took all my sins for me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's what communion is about. Thanking God for the greatest gift he's ever given to us, his own son, Jesus. Or thanking Jesus for the greatest thing he's ever did for us. Died on a cross to take our sins away. Not just some of them, all of them. <laughs> Sinless. 100% righteous. No guilt. No, uh, I'm not good enough. <laughs> no depression. Fullness of joy and peace and righteousness in the kingdom of God. And it's like a model God gives me. It needs to be this way. I can help you through it. I control it. So it's like you got to think something like, uh, I don't deserve to be alive and breathing on planet Earth right now with a second chance to go to paradise forever. <laughs> which Adam lost or something. But this is what a good, merciful God wants to do. Keep the creation going. He could have wiped everybody out in the days of Noah. They are so wicked or something. And if he hadn't drowned the people in the days of Noah, they would have murdered each other, and I wouldn't even be alive and breathing today on the earth. But God intervenes sometimes when the wickedness is rising up. He brings a standard against it. So the, the people that do want to choose his salvation and love and obey him can. And they can go to his paradise forever and get great rewards for going through this suffering earth and still trying to love and obey him through it. So we have to understand it's a evil and dangerous world. Most people don't realize that. It's like the three kinds of judgment days. There's like the judgment day for the unbeliever. Hell forever. They could drop dead any time and be in hell forever today or something. By supper time. But they don't seem to care about that. You need to get saved. No, we don't. Or something. We don't believe in that Christianity stuff. Satan tells us not to. Okay, you make your choice. God gives us this free gift of eternal life in paradise. And people just trample it down and say, that's not important to me. The blood of Jesus or whatever. The cross of Jesus, the salvation of God. So when people go to hell, they deserve to go to hell. Because God's offered them the free gift to not have to go to hell. The free gift to have a good relationship with your God that can fulfill you on earth and can fulfill you in paradise forever. So they deserve hell if they reject God's love for them who made them and his free salvation for them who made them or whatever. They believe Satan's lies just like Satan believes lies and they destroy themselves with doubt and everything. An awesome God. We need to believe that God is our source of love, joy, peace, 100% righteousness. He's our perfect problem solver. No problem is too big for Jesus to solve. You just got to ask him, how do I deal with this problem? I've been dealing with problems for 60 years. God hasn't failed me yet. I may have failed him a lot. I, uh, sometimes I think I obey God about 50% today. <laughs> We're living in such an evil and suffering world, and that's pretty good. I don't save myself by obeying God 100%. I save myself by having faith in Jesus' cross to make me 100% sinless and righteous. So to me, it looks like most of the church is about 20% obedient. They don't do church like the Book of Acts or anything like that or have much power in their life. Because I went to a missionary school, I've tried to learn lots of truth from God. I'd say I'm around 50% obedient. One selfish thoughts, a sin or whatever. But it doesn't bother me. It's just it's just affecting my rewards in my mansion or something. 50% obedience, here's 50% rewards. 20% uh, obedience, here's 20% rewards. But the church doesn't seem to understand that. You got to, salvation is a free gift. You get into heaven as a free gift. But if you want rewards and great careers in heaven, kings and priests unto God forever, you got to be a good and faithful servant as much as you can or something, or obey God as much as you can to get these rewards or great careers in heaven later, if that's what you want. <laughs> and so you got these three judgment days. An unbeliever goes to hell. That's about 90% of the population. <laughs> and this 10% of Christians is mixed up with some are 20% obedient, some are 50% obedient. If I was in a great revival in the future for the remnant, I might be 70% obedient. But for now, in this uh, 
demon controlled church world. I'm about 50% obedient, <laughs> trying to be like a happy Noah. I'm trying to believe truth and obey God. Nobody else around me is hardly where I live or something. Well, the future looks like great judgment on the wicked, lots of sickness, poverty, and death. It also looks like God helping the righteous out through it miraculously. Maybe getting some people saved in the chaos or getting some people doing church in a more obedient to God way in the future, like a book of Acts church or something. Don't have that now, but when the judgment hits, you might find people that want to start to obey God or something like that in the midst of great apostasy in the future. We don't get a choice. We uh, have to be born in an evil and suffering world in a spiritual war with Satan, but it doesn't mean we have to lose it. With Jesus, we can always win. He never loses. Jesus never loses. You want to follow him, you'll have victory over this evil and suffering spiritual warfare world. When we get to heaven, we'll say it's all worth it. I couldn't have got to heaven and got great rewards in my mansion or something unless I went through this evil and suffering world first and obeyed Jesus through it. I didn't choose to make this world or myself or something. God did. I'm just deciding whether I want a good relationship with God or a bad relationship with God. Go to heaven and get little rewards because I obeyed God a little or go to heaven and get great rewards because I obeyed God greatly. <laughs> that type of thing. So you get into heaven as a free gift through the cross of Jesus Christ. Like when uh, God sees my faith in Jesus' cross, he says something to me like, uh, I will remember your sins no more. So every sin I've ever did is on Jesus. God doesn't see it. He chooses not to see it. And Satan tries to tell me that uh, I am my sin or whatever, <laughs> that uh, you're not good enough yet or something to be in God's presence or whatever. you got to fight Satan off. It's not by my work, Satan. It's by the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus takes all my sins away. Jesus makes me sinless, 100% righteous. Can't get any better than that, Satan. Go away with I'm not good enough or something. <laughs> Lies. Jesus makes me good enough, Satan. I'm getting some 50% great rewards unless I start upping my obedience to 70% in the revival or something. Seeing miracles and everything. But you don't want to base your faith on miracles because people can see a miracle one day, forget about God's goodness the next day in trouble or something. you got to have a faith that got through suffering or... Great revival, joy, or something. So, we're not going to be worried about the 90% in hell. God doesn't make any mistakes on Judgment Day. We'll all understand why they're there. They'll understand why they're there, and they'll accept why they're there. Yeah, I'm guilty, they say in hell. They're not going to be saying, I don't know why I'm here. Or something. You made a mistake, God. No, God didn't make any mistakes. He gave a sudden, He gave us the word. It's here. It's like I think of the greatest truth school to go to is picking up a Bible and letting the Holy Spirit, the truth teacher, teach you truth. <laughs> Better than probably most of these Christian schools you go to. They'll teach you a bunch of lies or something. So we don't have to say, oh, if I only had a good church, if I only had a good truth teacher or something. Well, you got the Holy Spirit. I'll teach you all truth. Pick up the Bible, say, God, teach me what it means, and get the, a knowledge of the truth that can be enough for you here on earth or whatever. We decide. It's like, that's why reading the Bible is important. There's different things God wants us to do now or something. Study the Bible with God as the truth teacher, learn the truth from it, about who God is, how to relate to Him, what spiritual warfare is about, <laughs> how to win it. And prayer is important. Hearing God's voice. Lesson teaches things. What's the best thing to do now, God? Get an answer back and start doing it with the power of God to do it. I don't know what's best to do unless God tells me what's best to do now. It's following Jesus, not following demons or whatever.
I don't need God. I don't need him to tell me what to do. I know what's best. And Satan just takes over and it's a selfish mess or whatever. Bible study, prayer, worship. It's like we can't worship God unless he reveals how great he is to us. we got to ask him the question. It says in the Bible, if you lack wisdom, ask God for it. How great are you, God? Get an answer back and start worshiping him. Not trying to figure out if he's good or not with Satan's lies in your mind. God's not worthy of worship. God can't be good in an evil and suffering world. No, Satan, he can be good in an evil and suffering world. <laughs> Giving us a second chance of paradise forever. Not because of our good works, because of Jesus' good works on the cross. Which make us sinless and make us 100% righteous. So we can be in the presence of God. I don't go into God's presence because I've done enough good works today. I could have just murdered somebody and go into God's presence today. That's the way it is. There's not like some sin or something that God can't forgive. Except for maybe doubting in his salvation. <laughs> That's about it. If you doubt, you miss out. If you believe, you receive. But if you believe that Jesus can take all your sins away, he can take all your sins away. <laughs> And remember them no more. When I see you, I see you as righteous as Jesus, Rod. Because of your faith. So that's some of the things that God wants to teach us.